Hi, welcome to A Gadget Cutting the Caboose, and I have a new thing! I have a new thing I need to show you. I have a Nintendo Switch! Ha <laughs> ha! Which isn't a Wii or a Wii U. It's a Switch, look at that! Ah. Uh... That's one, for the, that's one for the thumbnail, right? Some sort of booklet with zelda -y things on it. Okay. I have a pro controller, because I'm a pro. I said I would never do one of these again, on account of the fact that I've got plastic statues all over my house. and not the fun type. But I have gone for a special edition Legend of Zelda, because it's got a, a big plastic sword in it. It looks like that and it can go on my shelf because I like shelf things. So without further ado, firstly I will open my Zelda and then I can decorate my shelf with new things and then we can get on with the um, the not we. Oh, it, has, it has a CD as well. And my CDs for playing music from the past and a cartridge for the game which we'll be going through in a bit and then flaps this is not a very interesting video. I'm going to tip the box up. Oh! Out, out, damn spot! Zelda, the accordion edition. Grief, so much packaging. More cardboard. This is why the rainforests are dying, kids. Zelda swords. And now some polystyrene. Seriously, this thing is now getting up to here. It's going to fall in some sort of... Tower of Babel or something. Got packaging. Gone. And finally, we have. Which, if I cannot break it, should be. Mm. Smells of acrylic. A, it's really heavy, actually. It's handy for keeping papers on. A Zelda sword. It doesn't come out, so you can't use it as a, as a letter opener. But here it is. So what do you think? No, let's put it here, look. There. Would you think Darth would be offended if I put it behind where Darth is? Maybe I put my steampunk hat here. And my Disney goblet right up there. Hey, voila! Right then, let's put this crap away. Ah, Zelda sword. Yeah, I did say that I would never buy one of these special edition ones again because all, all you end up with is like tons of plastic boxes all over the house um, and tons of like use, useless junk tat. But I quite like that. And I figured I've got a use for it on my empty shelf right there. Bye bye. Okay. Okay, onto the switch. Oh, look at that. That is really nice. Let's open it up and see what's inside. Okay, let's get to the main attraction right away. Without further ado, we have the Switch. It's tiny, by the way. Gotta say, that is really sweet. How lovely is that? It's um, USB-C. Oh, my light isn't on above me. Shoddy, shoddy, shoddy. Why have I put the light remote controls the other side of the room? Watch this, right? No light. Light. Now we're cooking on gas. So that's really nice. Um, USB-C, which is good. It's like, like, like what all the cool kids are doing now. I wonder if this will charge a MacBook or I can use it as a battery. Probably not. Then we have these little side controllers here. I didn't go for the red and blue edition. I went for the gray one. I thought the red and blue one looked kind of cheap, but I've seen a few other people with the red and blue. It looks quite nice. So these, I haven't tried this yet, clip on the side, with a nice click. Ta-da! Oh, that's lovely. It's a bit big for a handheld, but then again, the screen is huge. Oh, on the back, you've got a little kickstand as well, so you can prop it up. 
on a plane, when you're commuting in the hotel so you can watch TV in tiny vision. That is really nice. I wonder how these come off. Ah, okay, there's a little button on the back there, look. Right on the top, if you can see that. Just press that, and it slides off. Because you need these for this next bit. Again, I'm doing this, I haven't rehearsed this. You know, I'm just this professional. Ah, okay, so there's a ton of other stuff below. So there's two layers in the box. So below this, we have Now this is when you've got your console docked, you slide these little controllers in and then it becomes your trackpad. Well, that's not bad actually. It feels comfortable, a little bit tight, a bit, a bit of a cleavage enhancer, you know. But that's quite nice. So that's good. Impressed with that. Things on strings. I don't know what these are. Oh yes I do. These are so right, right. So when you're using the controllers, let me strip this down again. It's got a really nice feel actually. It's very um it, everything clicks and feels very solid. It's not like the Nintendo stuff we've seen in the past, which always felt a little bit mm, which way do these go? Ah uh, so these little things slide onto your controller like that. And then there's a little locking switch here, I think. Oh yeah, that's cool. So that's now locked in place. You've got a little lever on the end there, which locks them. And then it becomes a one player controller. You've got sensors and buttons, so you can have two people playing at the same time. Oh, that's jolly impressive. So this is the base unit, I believe. This is what you dock the thing in when you're using it on your TV. And again, it's really small. That's the front, you've got USB ports on the sides and the back sort of folds down, cables go in there. Hmm, here's a thought. There's not actually any way to put it like this. So if, you, if you've got a, an AV stand with shelves, the only way this will mount is like this, so it has to go on top of something. There are no feet at the bottom to mount it this way. It might work, I'll try it. I mean, the, the, the holes for the cables do go in on the side or on the back, but it looks like it only really goes one way. Well, that's gonna suck. And then you have the the, uh, the switch itself. Just slides in. Boom, docked, like magic. Pretty good. Although, I'm not sure about the um, orientation, shall we say. I'm sorry, I'm looking at the wrong screen here. HDMI cable, yawn, and a line lamp. No, a wall watt. Power supply. It's basically a USB power supply. All the meat on one end. Quite a, quite a lump too. What is it? 2.6 amps. USB-C power supply. So that's it. That's everything that's in the box. Don't need that HDMI cable so that can go into storage. I have bags of cables here all over the place. So many cables. With the Wii U, you had quite a lengthy migration procedure from your Wii, if you had one, which I didn't do because I didn't read the instructions and that really screwed up my Wii. But um, this doesn't seem to have that, so that's good. Finally, we have the Pro Controller. Because as much as I like Nintendo's own controllers, I've always found them a little bit a bit Japanese. So here we have, which I think I'll be using for most games, a USB-C cable and the Pro Controller. Ah, that's much more like it. Proper D button instead of the buttons on the little controllers. And it feels like a controller. That's nice. Very nice indeed. So. We'll see how these all play play nice together, actually. Looks a little bit a little bit odd. You can see oh no, there's patterns. There's like there's like sort of um you can see the moulding, it looks like it's semi-transparent. But it could be just cheap, I'm not sure. That's quite nice. Okay, so um 
this is the bits of the Nintendo Switch. So I'm going to pause here, move the camera downstairs, and let's set this puppy up and see what we've got. First of all, I'm going to be quite echoey because I'm in the room. There's no sound deadening in here. The microphone's all the way over there, and I'm not using a lavalier. Echo! Nice acoustics, right? Now, the switch is not going to mount on one of the shelves because they're designed for standard sort of PS4, PlayStation, Xbox type consoles. I don't know where you can see those. Let me uh, pan that down a little. There's a PS4 Pro and an Xbox S. And as you can see, the switch will not fit in those shelves, which is a pain in the ass. So, I'm going to put the switch here. However, there is a gaming PC on the bottom side there, which is no longer in use. So what I might do is put the VR kit and the switch in there, because it's a double height shelf. So that might work. Put some music on and get started. Oh, it's alive. So I'm just saying, do the, do the needful. It's a noise, did you hear that? It was HDMI 3. I will need the following. It's already on TV, you stupid thing. Well, no your luck. That's already been done. Now we're doing a system update, so this is going to be right exciting, isn't it? Let's uh, leave this do its thing. Back in a moment. So I'm going to pause it here, adjust my neck thing, and enter my county details. See you in a moment. Right. So, I've got Bomberman and I have Zelda and I'm going to go and throw some boxes away, tidy everything up and get some gaming going on. See you in a moment. Everything is set up, time to get on with some gaming, but first, I'm going to launch Zelda. Hi, welcome back. So, um, <laughs> I'm so tired. I have just spent uh, like 30 hours with hardly any sleep on the Switch, which is good. <laughs> Mainly playing Zelda, I'll be honest, Bobberman and um, Shovel Knight had a look into, but um, uh, Zelda, what a game. It's a masterpiece of a game, and I'll get onto that later. But first, the Switch. And here's the thing, it's really clever, it feels beautiful. Nintendo have done a fantastic job of making it feel like a really premium product. It's wonderful to hold. The satisfying clicks on the, the controllers as they all fit together is wonderful. The, the controllers themselves feel great. The Pro Controller feels great. It's a really, really nice piece of kit if you're using it the way Nintendo are selling it as a Switch device, as something that you play in the house and you take with you and you play on the go a bit and it, it's really good. Except it has some huge flaws. Massive. First of all, in mobile mode, which is a big part of the Switch's pitch, on a powerful game, on a big game like Zelda, it'll only last a couple of hours on your battery, three at a pinch. Or you've got to stay near the mains or you've got to carry a bunch of batteries around with you. And that's, you know, if you're near... Um, a high current USB port, maybe that's fine. But if you're in a car or in the plane, you don't usually have that to hand. Some, you know, really, if you've got a 70 grand car, you might have 1.4 amp or 2 amp USB ports. Most cars don't. 
Same in the plane, it's a trickle charger. It's not going to provide enough current that USB-C needs to charge that thing. So what's the market where, you know, it's, it's so it sort of goes in your backpack for presumably extended use? Because it can't go in your pocket either, because the thing is big. It's the size of a couple of fat DVD cases with handles on the end. Lovely to use. The screen is stunning. 720p, it's fast, it looks beautiful, but it's big. What pocket is that going to go in? I don't even have pockets. So so that's a problem. Um, so it's, it's, it feels, as a mobile device, it's no 3DS, you know? As powerful and as fantastic as the games are, and it's cartridge-based, you don't have, to, don't have to carry things around with you, it's a compromise in its mobile, in its portable ability. But okay, let's assume that the portable element is mainly not for on the go, but if you want to take it to bed with you and you want to carry on playing upstairs or something, uh, in the bedroom or whatever, that'll work. You plug it in. But it's really sold as a mobile device. You've got a kickstand for watching media and your remotes and things. But why do you get to use that for long enough? So then you've got the system docked. It becomes more powerful. It works on your TV. Brilliant. The system is tiny, so it doesn't take up much room. But then with it being so small, why can you only dock it upright? Which means you have to put it on top you can't put it on a shelf or something because you can't get the thing out then. Why did they do that? It doesn't, it's not like it needs discs and stuff much. So forcing you to put it in a, an open area and not on a shelf, which let's be honest, most of us who've got AV cabinets are going to be annoyed at. I've tried putting it on its side. It just doesn't work properly. Maybe a third party solution will come along, but then you're going to have the, the cables and... <laughs> did nobody say to Nintendo, hey guys, not, not everybody puts these things on top of their TVs, on top of their shelves or whatever. Okay, I can understand you need access to the um, to, to get the Switch unit out of its base, but that could easily work as a sliding, you know, a drawer or a tray horizontally mounted too. And then, bugs. The left controller keeps breaking. <laughs> it keeps losing sync. I died a lot because of this damn thing. Um, Nintendo have said, I'll oh, hold the controller differently. Well, how? I've got, we've got triggers and, and it keeps losing. And, and the, 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 the internet is full of people having the same issue. So it's got a serious problem here, which I hope will be fixed in firmware, but I suspect that it's a problem with the, the radio talking to wherever the base unit is. Don't know how you can fix communication issues with, and you know, your hands blocking the antenna with firmware. I don't know how that's going to be possible. And that's a major issue. Now, if you're using it in portable mode, not a problem. And if you've brought the Pro Controller, again, not a problem. But if you're using the Switch Controller, the one that comes with it, without paying extra, it doesn't work very well. Then there's storage. It has 32 gigabytes of storage. And that's all. You can plug in SD cards. No USB hard drive support yet. Apparently that's coming. What the act, really? No, so forget having downloads. <laughs> because where are you going to put them? And at the, at the current price of SD cards, 128 gig SD cards are what, about £100 at the moment for, a, for one that's fairly fast. Or I've got 256 as a 256 card in the camera now. It'll double the price of your Switch just for your storage. What were they thinking? 32 gigs, a couple of downloads and that is it. Your system is full. So you've got to delete stuff or spend a lot of money on storage until USB hard drives come along. Ah! <sighs> So as you can probably tell, I'm frustrated. I really enjoyed the the, 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 the lack of sleep, and I, I mean, I'm wiping sleep from my eyes here. But that's because of Zelda. That's how good Zelda is. But it's also that good on a Wii U. You don't really need a Switch to play Zelda. It's on both platforms at the moment, and the Switch feels like such a compromise. It's not gimmicky. All that stuff is good, but none of it as a whole is brilliant. It's also underpowered. Playing Zelda didn't feel particularly more powerful than the Wii U did. You still have frame rate drops. It can only manage 960p, which I'm not a resolution whore. From 720 to 1080 to 4K, even on my gigantic television, there isn't that much difference. Give me frame rates over resolution absolutely any day. But you don't have frame rates either. It feels like it's about 20 frames a second and it regularly drops. It has pop-in from things in the distance. Only have the large, the beauty shots, the money shots, when you have trees and the grass is swaying and the horses are running along with you, the damn thing slows down. So it kind of rules out third party support. Your Switch is going to suck at Call of Duty and cross platform titles. And, you know, let's be honest, it's competing with the current generation. Microsoft are moving on. They got the Scorpio coming out later this year. Sony have already released the PS4 Pro. It feels as if Nintendo are running to catch up with the train that's already left the station. And I really want Nintendo to succeed. I love Nintendo, but it's like they never listen to what their customers want. Or maybe they do. Maybe I've got it wrong. I don't know. But 
Bottom line, right now, don't buy a Switch. It has one good game and you can get that game on the Wii U. Hardly worth £400 um, by the time you buy the upgrades and your memory cards and the extras you're going to need. Uh, it's just, just don't buy a Switch right now. I, I really hate saying that. I wanted to say, buy the Switch. Nintendo have nailed it. They've gone back to, you know, their roots and they've made this awesome system. And they simply haven't. They've made a compromise and they haven't listened to people. And I'm so disappointed. Six, seven out of ten at best. It's not a must-have device just yet. Hold off. If you've got one, great. I've had, I have had a brilliant time, but I've had a brilliant time playing Zelda, not because it was running on the Switch. So there you go. Sorry to be the bearer of bad news. Please don't hate. <laughs> I know that some people really love the Switch and they're going to be disappointed or they don't like seeing negative reviews. This is a negative review and I didn't want to give one. <sighs> so there you go. Thank you so much for watching. Like, dislike, comment, etc. below. And I'll see you next time. Actually, I'm going to put it, I'm going to do Legend, Legend of Zelda review right now. I'm not going to stop the camera. Yes, I am some thirsty. But that's a much more positive review. So if you're really bummed about my Switch review, watch my Zelda review. It's going to be a better one. See you in a moment. Thank you all. Bye.